Watch the entire video before you decide to open your blaster, as I will not take any responsibility for your actions if you break your toy gun. Mod at your own risk. This mod will be using LiPo batteries. Ensure you understand the risks associated with LiPos, as mishandling them is extremely dangerous. In this video, I'll be showing you how to modify a Nerf Raven. While the Raven has had some repaints and some revisions done to the blaster, this mod guide will cover all models of the Raven, from the original Firefly to the new Raven Fire. The contents shown in this video are the basics of flywheel modding regardless of which flywheel blaster you're modifying. Just note that there will be some variations depending on the blaster you modify. Here is an overview of what I will be covering in this video and timestamps are located in the description below. Before we begin, here is a list of parts and tools you will need for this project. For tools, you will need a set of screwdrivers for disc and reassembly, a soldering iron, solder, and some flux. I use non-leaded solder, 6040 tin and copper. Optional but very useful are some handy hands for holding some parts and some brass wool used to clean your soldering iron. You'll need some wire cutters and wire strippers a Dremel, although a hobby knife and some snips are acceptable substitutes, pliers and side cutters, super glue, and some blue thread locker. For parts, I will be using replacement motors. These are out of darts 130 Valkyrie motors. A replacement flywheel cage and wheels. This is an OFP Morpheus cage with the included brass barrel, as well as some Instutanto flywheels. To supply power to the motors, I will be using an 850 mAh 3S LiPo with a 70C discharge, for which you will need the appropriate charger. In order to connect the LiPo to the motors, I will be using a male XT60 plug, some 18 AWG wire, black and red, and a 10 amp micro switch, which will be sufficient for the high current that these motors will draw. Finally, you will need an extended battery door. Now that we've got our parts and tools, let's start modding. Disassemble the blaster and take note of which screws go where. Tactical rail screws are a lot shorter and the iron sight screw at the front of the Raven is longer. If you have a newer version of the Raven, note that this handle is glued together. Using a flat head screwdriver and a knife, gently break the adhesive. When you're done, butterfly the shell open and set the top half aside so we can get access to the internals. This is a tactical rail tab along with its spring. Set them aside in a safe place as they can easily get lost. Set aside the jam door, mag well, and the mag catch along with its spring. Keep the main trigger and the rev trigger, including the screw and plate. This here is a lock. Ironically, we will be keeping this. Remove the muzzle and faux barrel, undo the hold down plate for the pusher, and set them both aside. Unscrew the flywheel cage, then take out the pusher mechanism and set it aside. This is the jam door rod. This is the only part that will stay in for the duration of this mod. All that is left are electrical and mechanical locks, so rip out the circuit and throw them away. As we will be replacing the flywheel cage, we won't need the existing one, so that can go as well. You should be left with an empty shell. In order to put in our replacement parts, we need to prep the shell. As you can see, the Morpheus cage is slightly bigger than a standard Raven cage, and as a result, it won't fit in properly. Using some side cutters, cut out a small square as shown in order to fit the cage in. Do the same thing on the other side. Check the fit on both sides of the shell and ensure that the cage sits nicely into place. The cage should fit nice and snug, and the shell should seal it in place. Do note that the Raven is a tight fit. We will be mounting a replacement switch. Line it up with your rev trigger so that it actuates the switch and then cut enough of the plastic away until the switch fits nice and snug. 
We will be gluing this into place after we rewire the blaster. The battery tray is up for modification next. These metal terminals will no longer be necessary, so turn the raven shell over and bend up the metal tabs from the inside, then pull them out with pliers. Dremel away these four tabs and ensure that it's nice and smoothed out. Cut a hole in the right hand corner for the wires and the XT60 plug. Once finished, the LiPo should be seated into place. Don't worry if the LiPo still protrudes as we will be using an extended battery door. Let's move on to the flywheels. Most mod motors have this red dot to indicate which way the motors will spin, so we will need to have them facing opposite each other. Orient your cage like this with the barrel facing away from you. The left hand motor will have the red dot facing towards you and the right hand motor will have the red dot facing away from you as shown. If set up exactly like this, then positive will be towards the front and negative will be towards the back. We will be using some screws to secure the motors. Before this, I apply a dab of thread locker onto the screws so that they won't come loose when the motors are vibrating. Place the motor in supporting the middle section with your index finger. Then screw it in gently. Take care not to lose these screws. Ensure that both the bearing and the screw are flush with the cage. Once done, put the other screw in place. Repeat the process for the other motor and leave the cage alone to cure for about 10 minutes or so. Once done, we can add the flywheels on. Align one flywheel onto the spindle like so. Get some pliers and support the middle of the motor and the flywheel and gently push them on. Repeat the same process with the other flywheel. Make sure that the flywheels are aligned with the barrel and that they aren't grinding on the cage. They should spin freely without any resistance. Let's start rewiring. Familiarize yourself with the common, normally open, and normally closed ports on your micro switch. The positions for these tabs may vary depending on the switch that you use. Here is a circuit diagram for how to rewire a Raven slash any flywheel blaster. I will be using two different markers where red will represent the positive wire and black will represent the negative wire. First, a wire will go from the positive on the battery plug to the common on the rev switch, then the normally open will go to the positive on the flywheels. This switches the flywheels on and off. Our circuit is complete by linking the negative of the flywheels back to the negative on the battery plug. Feel free to pause or rewatch this segment until you are sure of where you will need to solder the wires. Following our guide, let's start wiring up. Measure some red wire from the battery tray to the switch and from the switch to the flywheel cage. Do the same thing with the black wire going from the cage to the battery tray, then cut accordingly. Always add extra wire, you can trim it back later. First, let's do the LiPo plug. Strip one end of the wire and twist the strands together. To ensure a good electrical connection, tin the wire by melting a small dab of solder onto your iron, place it against the wire to heat it up, then melt the solder into the wire, not onto the iron. Before we add some solder to the plug, I add a small dab of flux in the terminals. Then I fill it up with some solder. You'll notice that the solder is nice and liquid, so go easy with filling up the terminals. Then add a dab of flux onto the tin wire and remelt. A good electrical connection should be nice and shiny. If the joint looks frosted or crystallized, it's a bad connection. Reheat and try again if this happens. Repeat this process for the negative wire. We will need to insulate these terminals, so cut two centimeter pieces of heat shrink and slide it over the connections. 
To fully shrink it, use a heat gun, lighter, or the soldering iron to shrink it up. We can now path the wires into the battery hole that we made earlier and ensure that the wires pass through nicely. I did have to cut a small channel here to allow them to fit a bit better. Next, we'll do the switch. Like with the plug, add some flux and tin the normally open and common tabs. Strip the wires, tin, and cut some heat shrink, sliding up the heat shrink as far away from the joint as possible. Solder on the wires to their respective terminals. Once cooled, slide the heat shrink back onto the joints and shrink it up. You can now bond the switch into place. Finally, we will be soldering on the flywheels. Starting with the positive wire, mark the position of the motor tags with your fingers. Gently strip the middle end, twist the strands together and tin. Strip the end of the wire and do the same thing. Again, add some flux onto the motor tags, then tin and solder up the wires. I highly suggest soldering the middle piece first, then the end. Repeat this process for the negative wire. And we're done! Plug in a test pack and give it a quick test to see if the motors are spinning the correct way. It works! Before the flywheel cage goes back in, we'll need to put the pusher in place. Put the hold down plate back in and secure it with the two screws. Now the cage can go over the pusher rod. A few small dremeling touches were needed to get the rev trigger back together. Reassemble the rev trigger along with the added lock, making sure not to lose that spring. Then add back in the main trigger, ensuring that it activates the pusher rod. Put the mag catch, the mag well, and the jam door back in its place. Don't forget the tactical tooth and the faux barrel, then close up the blaster and screw it back together. Connect your LiPo and cover it with the extended battery tray, and congratulations, you've just modded your Nerf Raven. 118 115 122 82 117 So we've converted this Nerf Raven to shoot at around 100 to 120 feet per second and overall I'm so happy with how the project turned out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you the firing test. I've loaded up 12 brand new waffle head darts. And the LiPo is fully charged. It is an 850 milliamp hour 3S LiPo with a 70C discharge. So here we go. Okay. As you can see, all the darts hit the fence from, and I'm standing at about 16 meters away, approximately. I am so happy and just lost for words and just really happy with this project. So that concludes the end of the video. If you liked it, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you want to see more on Red Ninja Productions, subscribe and join the Ninja Academy. But until next time, see you guys later. Bye.